It's Waxing Lyrical, baby. Hello, Waxers, and welcome to Waxing Lyrical, Mains and Dots. I'm your incredibly annoyed host, Mains, and my colleague in the Danger Zone in Rainford is Mr. Neil Dutton. How are we, Neil? If you're going to follow that sport closely, you're going to get annoyed more from time to time. <clears throat> to, to be honest, though, that that's, that 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 was if we were doing the soccer podcast, I could be tremendously annoyed slash shocked slash stunned slash not remotely surprised by my professional American team as well, who team, let out teams. Who, teams let, yeah, well, let, <clears throat> let's just let's just focus on Washington at this point. Who let who did what I fully expected to do, and no, and a lot of people who I know, and a lot of people on who are very good at this and do it professionally, didn't and assumed that, because, didn't care that Atlanta, while being crap, scored 28 points every single game as a minimum. And Washington scored that on a good day. Yeah, I'd say it was the, <clears throat> excuse me, it was the football equivalent of rolling over and having your belly tickled. Although, to be fair, it did look at one point like Josh Norman literally did try and roll Julio Jones over to tickle his belly. I wish I wish we would have rolled over and had our belly tickled rather than roll over and get our legs broken or rip our t- pectoral muscles or whatever we did to that offensive line, which meant there was about four lads left and one of them was like a wide receiver playing, playing uh, right guard. Well, you know, injuries aren't an excuse in the NFC East anymore after last year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So laugh it up. I, I won't be laughing it up. I, I'll be I'll be picking accordingly in the Tamp in Washington versus Charles Dagnall's Tampa Bay Buccaneers this week. Indeed. Um, and we'll probably come on to players in said game later on in the show. Will we? I you will, might. I will be. Oh yes. Oh yes, I will be. Um, usual fair don't it's week 10 we are slap bang in the middle of our fancy team stinking but us helping other people with their fantasy woes hopefully how generous we are how generous we are if only we would have followed our own advice um, and and not picked Le'Veon Bell and Dalvin Cook as our first two running backs this um, isn't a we issue by the way that's that a you a, issue that was a me issue and I'm I've got two more wins in our league of record than you which yeah. shows, you, shows you how bad you're doing usual fair Plugged into the mains, we look at the big stories of last week and focus ahead on this week in a hashtag beat Dallas question mark kind of way. Um, I'm pretty sure they'll beat themselves. Well, we'll, I'm sure we'll come on to that. Um, Then we'll do Dutton's Fantasy Darling and Fantasy Loser and then we'll wrap it up with our DFS teams of the week where... um, yeah, you need to get 150 points to win, and if you don't pick uh, Kareem Hunt slash Alvin Kamara, you're going to be in issues. But less of my gambling losses for last week. Let's get into the show, and let's plug into the mains, Don. Don, after watching um, Sunday 9, 9pm 9 games in the UK, um, is it okay, and I know you probably disagree, if we just fix it so we get Rams Saints again sometime in the playoffs, preferably the NFC title game? I wouldn't hate it. Um, it it's reading a, a book, where the author of which we'll come, uh, we'll come to later, it was, it was like a test match in the sense that it was just a question of can you hold your serve? <clears throat> and it's like, hold your serve, that's fine, take care of that, and break the opponent every now and then, which in the first off, uh, the Saints were able to do. Um, let's let's call a spade a spade, though. The Saints got scru- uh, the Rams got screwed by the refs at least twice um, on questionable calls. Um, but does not alter the fact that that's a game that, as nice as it was to see it in the early days of November, deserves to be seen in prime time in January for all the marbles. Yeah, and I think, you know, there were a few questionable calls, but if we did that in every single game, we'd be here forever. Or we'd be our, our friends Chal and Tony talking about a Patriots game every week. Um, Most so, true. Exactly what we won't be. But what we need to say is that, you know, um, the, the the Saints scored 42 points. Um, I think you used the phrase ginger stepchild a lot. Um, this week, it, 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 ginger stepchild was Marcus Peters. Um, I love the idea that and Michael Thomas's uh, catch completion rate with Drew Brees has went down to a mere eighty percent this week. Um, Alvin Kamara, Ingram, no Marcus Davenport, so that that means it's understandable why there wasn't as much of a pass rush. I do, qu- I do worry if I'm the Rams now. 
based on that game, are you going to be able to win in New Orleans? Or are you now hoping that the NFC South does you does you a solid while you play the Dross NFC West? So that's obviously the thing. I mean, now that they, these teams, they're not they don't have even records, I say, because I think the Saints already have their bye. But when it all said and done, they essentially have the same record. And now there's this tiebreaker. I, I mean, we have seen one thing from the NFC South this year. They can score points. They just couldn't stop a runny nose. Uh, even when a team like the Panthers, who are playing as well as anyone over the last few weeks, but defensively they can still be had. So I think it's, again, one of those, they all have weapons on offence, but none of them have as many weapons as the Rams, and they also don't have as uh, talented a play caller as Sean McVay. So if it comes down to you know a chess match in that regard, I would take the Rams. So unfortunately, you know... I, I, it's it, it, for me the balance, the balance of power has shifted towards the the elder, Sean. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Um, I think I think you're right. Um, I guess if we if we move on and, and kind of keep in that NFC South as one of the teams, if you're if you're one if you're one of the Rams or the Saints or the Chiefs or the Patriots, who I think we can quite comfortably say are the top four teams in the league right now, power ranking style. Who do you fear more, Panthers or Chargers? Um, the, the North Turner Bowl. I, it's it's hard for me to say which because they're both equally dangerous. There's only one quarterback who's thrown multiple touchdowns in every game this season. And that's Phil Rivers, and potentially they could be getting better on defense if uh, if Joey Bosa comes back. Please, for the love of God, set on a kicker who uh, who works. I really don't want this Chargers team, which is potentially the best Chargers team since 2007, uh, the year that, um, I think it was shot the year after Schottenheimer got fired, with 14-2. and two. This is the best Chargers team since then. Do not blow this season because of a missed kick, for the love of God. But, as, you quite, as you quite rightly pointed out, Neil, uh, surely one of Phil Rivers' kids is old enough now to kick for the, San, for the Los Angeles Chargers, and based on the fact that I thought he was going to have a heart attack or commit a murder on on Sunday led me to believe that maybe he should just get one of his kids because his kids probably won't want to disappoint him as much as Caleb Sturgis does I'm guessing as well he probably wouldn't speak to his kids that way um, speaking you know as an Eagles fan there is a, a, a gif of Caleb Sturgis in his reaction after missing a field goal if you've done that that means you've done it more than once going back though to you know how dangerous this team is um, per Josh Norris Cam Newton has 20, sorry, has 13 pass plays of 20 or more yards in the fourth quarter this season. They're not blowing teams out, but they they don't know the beat either. I it's it's funny really because they're they're a strange team, but if they're first and goal in your first first and goal, are they? Is there an argument that they're the most dangerous team in the NFL because they have? Cam Newton, who above anybody else can run it in as a quarterback better than anyone else. They have Christian McCaffrey, who's been fantastic this year. And, you know, don't need to talk about when he was drafted. He fits perfectly into the scheme that North Taylor is running. Devin Funches is playing really well. And old man Greg Olsen, that broken foot doesn't look broken anymore. It was the fact that, you know, at one stage they had, was it three rushing touchdowns? None of which have been scored by Cam Newton that boiled my piss. Quite yeah. frankly, you know, to put too fine a point there. So you're thinking now, it's like, well, hang on. So if we don't know the goal line, is it going to be Cam? Is it going to be McCaffrey? Still might be CJ Anderson. Oh, no, it's going to be Jack. You know, it, it, it's going to be Curtis Samuel. Oh, hang on a sec. We can give it to DJ Moore. Oh, my God. Contract the field all you want if you don't know who to stop. Well, that's just on the ground game. And then they decide, OK, well, we've got the pillars of the earth. You know, as you say, Greg Olson, Devon Funchess. Potentially, they're a team that literally you don't want them getting on your goal line because I mean, I... they'll probably, say, aside from maybe the Saints and the Rams, we'll say that as well, they're probably the most multidimensional red zone team in the NFL. They're frightening. And the ironic thing is, Don, you had them absolutely beat and Washington absolutely beat them. Mm. It doesn't, it's crazy. Final thing, Neil. Um, 
as as um put uh, as our group text was changed to this week, it was hashtag beat Dallas. I had to uh, edit that because unfortunately for me, it might be hashtag beat Dallas. Maybe, kind of. Is it all right if I let them win one? You answer to your own conscience with that. <laughs> exactly right. I think well, it's, it's Philly Dallas this week, and so obviously it's a. Uh, it's preordained that it has to be Sunday night football. Um, Good. I know a lot of people. It. I know. I know a lot of people will watch it because it's Philly Dallas. I don't know why a lot of people watch it because it's Philly Dallas. Um, anybody who watched Dallas uh, yesterday on Monday night uh, should be very concerned. I, I mean, Neil, you sent them stats to to us earlier about um, Dak Prescott, who in theory, statistically, has been worse than Eli Manning. He was shite. You know, uh, there was no other. No other way to put it. Um, the turnovers are on him. The play calling is not, so he's not being helped. They, For some reason, you're going to have to tell me this. This is a team that has basically gone out of their way to say, we're going to run the ball, we're going to run the ball, we're going to run the ball, and through that, we're going to use Zeke Elliott, Zeke Elliott, Zeke Elliott. Why is he not getting the ball in the second half? It was never more than a one-score game. But not only did you go away from the run, you went to him. And I'm sorry as well, just a little t- a tip. This Monday Night Football crew are terrible because I do not know of a player who got spoken about more for nothing that he did in a game than Cole Bloody Beasley. We get it, Jason. You were a teammate. He wasn't targeted. He never caught a pass. He threw a pass at the, in garbage time. That's all he did. You constantly saying, oh, he might look for Cole Beasley here, or he likes to use Cole Beasley here. The previous 45 minutes of game time dispel that notion, Jason. But I think, I think this, they, is an issue, they, this is an issue, right, if we talk about the ESPN crew. You can't fix this. Like, like today. Like you can't fix it in week 10. You can't fix it until next season. So now you've just lit, literally, probably at week two, you were like, made a bit of a cock up here. And there's yeah. not really much we can do about it, apart from live through it for the next 14 weeks. It was, it's, 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 I mean, I don't know what, I mean, obviously I only watch the condensed game, so I only hear a bit of it. So I don't hear the what I'm sure is epic banter between Tessator, Witten and Bugger. But... <laughs> It's just the waffle they they chat. It's saying, you know, at one point they had Mariota um, with a zone read to get a first down, and straight away Booker McFarland. If you want to be successful in the NFL, you can't expose your quarterback to those type of hits. I'm sorry, what? It's what Marcus Mariota has done well since coming into the NFL. It's what Cam Newton has done well since coming into the NFL. Oh God, do you know it's 2018, McFarland? Seriously, look at a calendar. Look at some game film. Do something. Enhance my enjoyment of this game. For God's sake. If we don't beat... I'll I'll put this on record now. If we do not beat the Dallas Cowboys this week, be prepared for the angriest podcast next week. Seriously, there is nothing you can say next week that will not get my goat if we do not beat this Dallas Cowboys team. And you know me, very rarely on this show do I refer to the Eagles as we, because I try to maintain some professionalism. I think I think we need to be clear now, and this is for both me and Neil, after watching the NFC East, regardless of how mediocre our teams are, and at the moment they are mediocre, although the Eagles have a chance to be good, that's fine. If they both don't beat Dallas home and away, and the Giants home and away, serious questions will need to be asked. Yeah, I'm prepared to, you know, I'm being generous, I'm prepared to split a game with the Redskins. I am not prepared to split end up with other, those other two showers of crap. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Well, don't uh, Can I just say as well, though, just on a, on a similar thing, um, do you think Jerry Jones knows what leverage is? Hmm. I, I, look at, I look at Jerry Jones like I look at Dan Snyder, like I look at um, Jimmy Haslam, like I look at I, I don't know. Let's 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 stick at the three top the three top contenders and like you are literally billionaires mm. who who are tremendously successful people. Um, and I, I I assume that it was by complete and utter accident. Because mm. or Cause... did you decide that whatever you did in business, you are not going to do in 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 sport? Because that's yeah. what's happening. 
because I just don't understand coming out. By all means, back your under fire young quarterback, but saying he's going to get extended, well, what leverage have you got there? What are you going to possibly say to his agent? Oh, when we said the extended, we obviously meant we were going to offer him below league minimum. Because what you've basically just said by that is, not only is he going to get extended, you're going to make him the highest paid quarterback in the NFL, aren't you? Please do. Please do. Matt, I can't. I, my dreams my dreams will, would come true. Um, Neil, let's get away from the news. Let's head to the fancy world. Um, as usual, three things. We're going to go daily fan, day, uh, daily fancy team of the week. But first of all, Neil's going to hit you with the yin and the yang, the good and the bad, the darling and the loser. And we're going to focus first on who Neil's fancy darling is this week. Hello, darling. Well, with the news that AJ Green's probably going to be missing, certainly going to miss this week, probably going to miss multiple weeks. That means Tyler Boyd should see a larger workload. And to be fair, he's done quite well with what he's had all season. He's only got 67 yards and a touchdown less than Green. He's actually got four more receptions. He's got four games of 20 or more PPR points this season. Um, they are playing the Saints. The Saints are, have allowed at least 39 fantasy points in to wide receivers in seven of their eight games. Now, bear in mind how well the Saints do against the run. We saw they shut down Todd Gurley completely almost. There's a good chance that well, this game does have sneaky shootout potential and it's likely that Andy Dalton's going to have to do an awful lot of throwing, which is good for Tyler Boyd because, to be honest, behind Green and Boyd, there was very little. Now behind Boyd, there's probably nothing. So we could see a situation that Boyd gets absolutely peppered with targets. Um, if anyone cares, um, AJ Green also won my league of record, um, killing killing them off one at a time. Um, so obviously... AJ Green's a, uh, obviously I'm a fancy loser as is AJ Green this week but let's find out who Neil's picked as his fancy loser it's not a loser in the sense of you know a New York Giants loser or the Dallas Cowboys but I just don't think Joe Mixon is going to have a particularly big game this weekend. The same game, obviously, the uh, Bengals against the Saints. Saints are an awful lot better against running backs to, than wide receivers, as I've already said. Mixon hasn't done badly this season in home games. He's averaging 4.9 yards uh, per attempt, which is uh, compared to 4.8 on the road. 91 yards, at, averaging 91 yards per game at home. He's got 11 receptions in four home games. He's not been a big part of the passing game. There's a chance Gio Bernard might be back as well, so any possible work that he gets that way, he may lose to Gio. So mixing this all that, I would certainly temper my expectations with. I'm not going to go all out and say I wouldn't start him because I said that about Drew Brees last week. So, you know, take from that what you will. Mm, absolutely, Neil, absolutely. Um, well done for owning that, by the way. Um, that's it. Fancy darling, fancy loser, same game. Um, nice touch. Let's get on to those people who love the daily fancy as their you know, season-long fancy teams have struggled. Let's pick our daily fancy teams of the week. Mains and Dots. Daily fantasy team of the week. Show me the money. Usual fare. DraftKings, 50k. Quarterback two running backs, three wide receivers, a tight end, a flex, and a defence and special teams. Neil, who is your quarterback this week? 5,800, the Cincinnati Bengals at New Orleans Saints, Andy Dalton. Um, the Saints have allowed, in the last three games, 26.7, 20.7, and 29.3 to quarterbacks, as we say. You can't run on them, so you have to pass on them. Andy Dalton has got multiple touchdowns in six of his eight games this season. People may talk about how Dalton is affected by the fact that AJ Green isn't there. Interestingly, Dalton only averages one fewer fantasy points per game with Green, without Green as with him. With Green, he averages 19.88. Without him, 18.95. So, correct me if I'm wrong, this is not a primetime game. So, it's we should be okay. Yeah. We should be okay with the with Big Red. Sunday, Sunday, one p.m. I think. So this is perfect Andy Dalton time. This is Andy Dalton prime, prime time. 
Yeah. This is pro- this is the prime Dalton. Um, my quarterback, um, six thousand. Um, mentioned earlier in the show, um, Los Angeles Chargers QB Phil Rivers, um, six thousand. Um, as long as the new kicker stops him having a heart attack and stops him from murdering someone, um, I think he's playing the best football that Phil Rivers has ever played. He, and he has he, he has weapons all over the place. It was just at times against Seattle, he looked like he had so much time to throw, and uh, because he, his line was protecting him so well, and unlike some quarterbacks, you see, the longer they have, the more panicked they get. He was waiting, waiting, waiting. Now you're open. Now I'll throw it. It's as someone pointed out. Um, the Seahawks had a was it a third and sixteen and punted. I think it was Greg Rosenthal. They had a third and sixteen and punted. The Chargers had a third and sixteen and two plays later that scored a touchdown. Yeah. I think I think there's a you know <clears throat> Seattle are a decent team. They're better than I thought they'd be. I have to say mm. that. But they're in the Washington school of you. You're playing 2005 football, and I'm not sure it's going to get you to the dance. No. Not when Russell Wilson was sacked quite a few times, and most of them were his, were his fault. Yeah, I mean, their, their, their offensive line is much better this season, much, much better. Um, Neil, who's your running back one? Running back one is Aaron Jones. Green Bay Packers uh, playing at Miami. <clears throat> Sorry, Miami playing at Green Bay. Uh, he's 5,000. Now, he seems to have established something of a hold on the lead back role in Green Bay. Granted, it would help if he didn't fumble the ball. As we see what happens to Green Bay running back to fumble. Mike McCarthy, not a fan. He does have 162 yards and a touchdown on 26 carries this last two games. The Dolphins are absolutely terrible at defending the run. They've allowed at least 101 rushing yards to running backs in all but two games, as well as seven rushing touchdowns to running backs. And I don't care what anyone says, and by anyone I mean Adam Gase, who is full of crap. That team is falling apart. The locker room is falling apart. Offensive players are pointing fingers at Brock Osweiler, and, Aaron, and you know, Rashad Jones just decides at half-time, nah, I'm done. I'm fed up. Yeah, um... Correct. Um, I think you're absolutely insane to pick anyone on the Green Bay Packers. Um, if you, the opposite of Phil Rivers having a heart attack is Aaron Rodgers passive aggressive. Get this fat meth off my sideline and get me a proper coach. It must break Aaron Rodgers' heart to hear Bruce Arians say the only job I'd come out of retirement for is Cleveland. Yeah, exactly right. I just look at it and think, like. They got beat by the pass last week with Cordero Patterson at um, running back. Um, a scat back, catching all the passes. No Gronk. And they've got Aaron Rodgers. Like, and I know Tom Brady's amazing, but he's still 41. And not as good this year as he has been in the past. So, like, know, it's, if I'm, it's... If I'm a, like, I know the, the issue with the Green Bay Packers, kind of, is they haven't got an owner. They've got 8 billion of them. Well, maybe mm. all 8 billion of them should walk into an office and say, Mike McCarthy, here's a P45, because we're not going to get... I know we got went from... I just assume they think, because he went from Favre to Rogers, there's just another one on the... Oh, we'll just get another one. It doesn't work like that. Washington no. have won three Super Bowls and never had anybody remotely good of that calibre ever. So you need to make the window count. Your talent is better than what you... What's being shown on the field? Therefore, you got to fire people. The thing is, though, do you remember Mike Leach a few weeks ago said running the ball fifty percent of the time, passing it fifty percent of the time isn't balanced. It's fifty percent stupid. <laughs> and, and basically, his idea was: I don't care if we throw it or we pass it. We put the ball in our best players' hands. Yeah, exactly. That's what New England were doing. If Cordell Patterson is not, he can't run. You know, the most precise route. Well, fine. Give him the ball. Put the ball in his hands. They had, I mean, they had the ridiculous number of people who attempted a rush. So fine, it doesn't matter if it's a running play or it's a passing play. Get the ball in your best player's hands as often as possible. That's a balanced offense. Not we pass fifty percent, we throw it fifty percent. Yeah, but you're crap. You throw. You're basically saying to one running back, you're getting fifty percent of the touches, whereas we'll we'll share the other fifty percent among six other people. Just no, that's that's nineteen twenties football. In fact, in 1920s, it was seen as advanced. 
So it's it's even you know it's not that good. Um, speaking of getting the ball in your in your best player's hands, um, running back one for me, um, Kareem Hunt, Kansas City Chiefs, been absolutely wonderful this year. Uh, got an absolutely special matchup against the Arizona Cardinals, who who are terrible. Like you're almost like probably should fire that coach after four games, which is never never a good sign. Like that, you know, ten games and you're like, Mm-mm, he's not very good at his job, is he? That we've made a mistake here. How do we fix it? Um, Green Hunters played really well the past few weeks. I know Mahomes has got a load of of the of the noise in Kansas City, and absolutely rightfully so. But Kareem Hunt is getting right into mid-season form, and he's a great pickup. Eight thousand five hundred, a lot of money, but absolutely mm. worth it. I think it's just that his touchdown um, against Cleveland, the screen pass. I've seen screen passes, but I've never seen one who literally have a running back after catching it. Literally had, I mean, the closest one was Wendell Smallwood at Wembley. Once you've caught it, turn up field. This is a touchdown. Save your, str- save it, boys. You know, it's the ball's gone to the boundary. <coughs> save your legs. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I actually wrote that uh, Patrick Mahomes needs one more 300-yard passing game this week to equal the all-time streak of nine consecutive 300-yard passing games. But I wrote he won't have an easy time. Because Arizona haven't allowed a quarterback to pass more than 230 yards in the last four games, which is a telling statistic. The other thing to remember is that the quarterbacks haven't had to throw for more than 233 yards because you can just everyone could run on them. Exactly, exactly. Who's your running back two, Neil? Running back two again in terms of you know we'll go balance, we'll spread it around. It's uh, Tariq Cohen. Uh, for the Bears against the Lions. He's 5,500. The Lions have allowed at least 87 rushing yards to running backs in every game this season. However, given the presence of Snacks Harrison, the Bears may, ch- and having given Jordan Howard a few weeks to you know get out of his system, I think instead of trying to you know smack into the line, play after play after play, they may decide extension of the run game will use Tariq Cohen as you know long handoffs passing game. He only he's only had two receptions in his last two games after 22 in the previous three, and he hasn't had more than six rushing attempts in the game since week four. But I think this could be one of those games that I don't think the Bears are going to be able to blow them out. So I think they're, they're still going to be it's still going to be a game, and we've shown that their best way of doing that when it is a live game is to use Tariq Cohen more than Jordan Howard. So I I, I, I like a cut count on this as we always stress. DraftKings is a PPR format, so 5,500, I'll take Tariq Cohen. I looked at, I looked at Cohen, but I'm fearful of, of that Jordan Howard um, vulture hanging mm. over his head. Uh, running back two for me, um, you should always always get involved in a revenge game if you can, if you can get if you can get one. Um, Dion Lewis, 4,600. Um, last couple of weeks in his world, obviously he's been in the middle of a bye, but charges and um, Dallas last night been the focal point of the offense and I think he should be in the way that Mike Vrabel wants the offense to offense to run okay he's not going to run for five yards of carry but he, he, he keeps people people um, keeps them honest for the run and then obviously gets a couple of uh, catches and as we mentioned as Neil mentions PPR so I think Dion Lewis is a good buy against the against the uh, Patriots defense which as we say they they limited what the Packers could do against them. It, well, obviously they're helped by the you know the elementary school offense that's getting run against them. And while they're not getting blown away, this is still not a great Patriots defense. It's well coached because you know we'd expect accept that. But in terms of pure defensive talent, it's not as good as past Patriots defenses. So, but the problem, the, the knack they have, of course, is making a play and. Mm. There are, I mean, you saw the first half, the Titans, good God, man, squeeze the football. Because there were two fumbles, there should have been another one. Yeah. And if there's a team who are going to punch that ball out, it's the New England Patriots. So, Absolutely. not a terrible, not a terrible pickup. And as you say, Lewis has played very well the last two weeks. Who's your wide receiver one, Neil? Uh, 8,100, Michael Thomas, very, very good at football. Very, very good at football. Um Love the love the throwback Joe Horn celebration. I saw someone saying like he got, oh, but he's giving away fifteen yard penalty. Um, 
and uh, that means you know he's going to give the the Rams go field position. Well, the dude's just going to kick it out the end zone. What difference does it make? He's just going to start at the same place. I don't. You know, you're going to lose maybe five yards, and it's cool. It's um, weird that with kickoffs, isn't it? It's like you get fifteen yard penalty, but for kickoffs, it's almost like you should, you know, you should get it. It should be yeah, the other way. Yeah, yeah, it should be the other way. It should be fifteen yards the wrong way, not not yeah. the, not the other way. Um, yeah, really good. As I said, um, his cat, his catch rate went down to eighty percent this week. He's not catching like three balls, by the way. He's catching like a billion. Do yeah. you know, like the, I, I saw a stat of people who caught more than. I think it was 50 balls. Um, there's only three players in NFL history who, who have had a catch rate as good as him. One of them is Austin Collie. Austin season. Collie for two years was bloody awesome because he no, just kept catching touchdowns. It's just classic, classic Peyton Manning. Who's this buffoon? Oh, look. Yeah, we'll score another touchdown. On um, the flip side, though, um, we should, should just press on the fact that Mike Evans had a historically bad game. From a target reception point of view on Sunday. He did. And, and I'm, I'm picking Mike Evans this week in a bounce-back ability level. 7,000, which is dead cheap considering he's the number one wide receiver for a team that's playing the Washington semi-professional football team who allowed Julio Jones to score a freaking touchdown. Like, I know. I But... All I'd say is, for those fearful and like, oh, he had like 15 targets and didn't catch a ball. Look at Washington's numbers versus versus number one receivers in the last couple of weeks. They battered the Giants. And OBJ still got 140 yards. Mm. Julio got 100 yards and a score. I'm okay, thanks. I'll go with I'll go with Mike Evans, 7,000, and see how it goes. The worst uh, that I could see um, of wide receivers with at least 10 targets... And one or fewer receptions was a in 2015. Demarius Thomas had a game for the uh, Broncos, who don't like to win anymore. Apparently, that parting shot uh, yeah. he said on his way to the Texans, uh, he was targeted 13 times and had one reception for 36 yards. 2015. Who was the quarterback then? Then uh, that would have been either Manning. Or Osweiler, I, I can't remember say, which one. I was going to say, yeah, okay, fair enough. Um, did you have you seen the Bill O'Brien video at the end of the Texans Broncos game? Yeah, you mean when he was talking to the guy on his sideline that bit? Yeah, when he, when what he, he said him, about when he, uh, the, 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 when he became Joe Pesci from uh, Goodfellas. Yeah. yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, do you know like the problem see... is, the problem is with with uh, with with it is you know he's absolutely one hundred percent right. Why are yeah. coaches still settling for 50 yard field goals? Behave yourself. There's another, just, they, there's another they, coach. You're fired, Vance Joseph. Yeah. See you they, later. They won't say play calls unless they're covering the mouth because they're scared of what someone's going to say, but you'll happily call the coach on the other side. A that. Yeah. Yep. Um, who's your wide receiver 2 Neil? Uh, 7,500 Tyler Boyd. Um, I'm, I'm quite well into this game. Um, yeah, as I say, I'm, as a fancy darling, I am therefore obliged to get him in the team. Absolutely, Neil. 7,500, you'd be best be obliged. In my wide receiver, <laughs> my wide receiver uh, two and three uh, share a common interest that they were both uh, traded this year. In my wide receiver two, um, 6,000, um, New England Patriots, best wide receiver since Randy Moss, uh, Josh Gordon. That's Jeez, fair. Um, have him, have him, and put him in a sensible system, and with boundaries and rules, and and let's see what happens. Oh look, he catches a load of a load of balls and scores touchdowns. Weird that, isn't it? Yeah. He's averaging four and a half catches for seventy eight yards over his last four games, um, and the Titans have allowed every team running a competent offense at least one hundred ninety three receiving yards to their wide receivers this year. So not Jacksonville or Buffalo. And they've allowed multiple wide receiver touchdowns in four of seven. Have you seen the stat about the Titans' defense? Go for it. They've allowed 12 touchdowns this year, combination of passing and rushing. And per pro football focus, Malcolm Butler's been at fault for seven of them. That's special. I assume I assume there's, there's, there's a lot of sullies from uh, the east side of Boston screaming that's why he was benched. Um, okay, fair enough. You're probably right. Um I would have liked to see how he played if you would have played, though. It's just me. Yeah. But, you know, who's your wide receiver three, Neil? 
Uh, Josh Gordon, six thousand dollars. It's the cheapest way to get a part of the Patriots passing game. Yeah, and he's dead good. Um, my wide receiver three is in the hashtag beat Dallas game. Um, the, th- the the opposite of a fifth round pick uh, for Josh Gordon will be a first round pick for um, Amari Cooper. However, Amari Cooper played reasonably well yesterday. Um, I expect the he, I expect Dallas to be behind a lot against Philadelphia and therefore throwing a lot. And therefore, as Jerry Jones controls the team and the coach and the quarterback, he'll be like, throw it to Amari Cooper a lot. The Eagles obviously are very, very welcoming to fantasy wide receiver this year. And they are already down uh, Sidney Jones and probably Jalen Mills for this game as well. So we're really into the Eagles cornerback depth. It's just a question of, is the you know if it comes down to which offense... You know this, these two teams in the race to seventeen. I would back the uh, I would back the Eagles defense to restrict the Cowboys to at least sixteen. Well, put it this way: as you said, there was two two fumbles in the first half that gave the Dallas Cowboys the ball in the in the thirty in their own, you know close to the red zone, and they got seven points. Have you been um, so? Bravo, well done. Did you see Brian Baldinger's Baldy breakdown? No, no, I haven't seen it yet. Um, It's a play from that game where one of the staples of the Washington offense under Joe Gibbs, they tried to run a counter tray. Mm -hmm. But basically they ran it, but they sent their tight end off on a pass pattern, which basically meant Harold Landry had nothing to do except get to the ball carrier, and he did and stopped him. I literally thought if you put Jason Garrett and Scott Linehan in the room while Bald, uh, while Baldy was doing this breakdown, I think he'd have smashed the projector over their heads. That's how <laughs> angry he sounded. You know, you cannot run counter tray and send your tight end out on a pattern. Can't do it. I don't care if it's Harold Landry or Lawrence <laughs> Taylor. You cannot do it. It's like Baldy. Just, yeah. You have but no skin in this game, so. But but don't worry though. Don't worry, you little head off. They'll all be back next year. The band will be getting back together. Clapping away like he's up for all he's worth, Jason Garrett there. Um, who's your tight end, Neil? Tight end, I'm going to keep going back to the David and Joku. Well, um, he is 4,200. He was back last week. He had a blip the week before when <clears throat> excuse me, the departing staff forgot he existed. He's had at least 52 receiving yards in four, five of his last six games. Now, I know Atlanta looked like it was going to be a great matchup uh, last week uh, because they are softish in the middle. They give up a lot of receptions to running backs, for example. But then you look last week, and I didn't know. I mean, someone needed to tell me because I'd have you know, at least tried to get to the ceremony or record it. What was Jordan Reed's retirement ceremony like? Because I, I, he... I thought he still played. Alex no? Smith. Alex Smith and Joe... Alex Smith and Jordan Reed are not friends. I don't know why I think Jordan Reed stole his milk. Possible. Or part of his space. Part of it, yeah. I don't know. They're not friends. I don't know why. Kate would have found him possibly 400 times. Just so we know, we still would have lost. It doesn't. The quarterback doesn't make the difference. Well, but he would have found him better. See, um, just again, change the subject. Cousins had an interception at the weekend that was just literally... A, I'm sorry, what the hell was that? I missed that. You're you getting know. paid how much? You missed that. You missed that. There's at least, I don't know, maybe five throws a game where you go you go to care coupons and you're like... Explain. I, I don't... What? What? Yeah. And you just hope. It, it's a, you just hope that someone I, I doesn't even, catch it. Yeah, it's, it's like, I can't even phrase the question properly for what I need to ask you about that. What? Yeah, um, my tight end, and you might be sensing a theme here, is O.J. Howard, um, Washington at the Tampa Bay Bucks. Um, um, as as I as I wrote here, um, him and he loves fits like a fat kid loves cake. Let's look at let's look at how good him O.J. Howard is with Fitz with Fitzpatrick and how good he is without him. Um, he for one is on the Fitz magic bandwagon. Um, and he's playing. Washington. Oh, he's driving it. He's playing Washington. Who? Um, yeah. Uh, as, as I said, Tampa Bay will score twenty-eight points. I think they've scored twenty-eight points every game this week, every game this season. 
I don't even with Jameis they were scoring twenty eight points. That's so you can say, Oh, Washington are better. Yeah, okay. But are Washington gonna score thirty one? That's the only question in the game. Can Washington score thirty one? Because Tampa's minimum is twenty eight. It just strikes me as odd that neither of us bear in mind we have three wide receivers and a flex to choose from. Neither of us have pursued the Deshaun Jackson revenge game angle. Because he's going to tell you a new one, you know. Because this is what he does to his old teams. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't been in, I haven't been in this no. position. I know you have multiple times. I did yeah. look at, I did look at Deshaun, but I wasn't sure I could pick Mike Evans, Deshaun Jackson, and OJ Howard. That's, that would have been a big theme. That's, yeah, that's a tenuous stack. That's 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 next level stacking. Who's your flex, Neil? Flex is Corey Davis. I'm not feeling great about it. 4,500. He's still enjoying a ridiculously large target share, but he's just doing bugger all with them. It's like he keeps getting you know his eight to ten targets a game, but aside from that one game against the Eagles, he hasn't had more than 62 yards in any game this season. However, you know, this is a game they may be playing from behind. Patriots are allowing at least 127 receiving yards to wide receivers in every game except one this season. And he did have a reasonably good game against the Patriots in the playoffs last year. Uh, he caught five of his eight targets for 63 yards and two touchdowns. But it's it's one of those, it's like you can keep feeding them and just <laughs> praying that regression hits because that's pretty much what it is at the moment. Um, here, just, just to go back on the Bengals, uh, Buccaneers, sorry, 48, 27, 27, 10. That was against the Bears. 29, 26, 34, 28. Um, should we do Washington's? See how many they've scored in their games this season? Because that'll be fun. So Washington's similar output is 24, 9, 31, 19, 23, 20, 20, and 14. Boat race! <laughs> oh, goodness gracious me. I know we're better than them, but you know what? We're not. This could be a half time stop, stop, he's already dead gift game. Yeah, exactly. Uh, my flex has already been noted as David and Joku. Yeah, I've gone to uh, tight end heavy here. Uh, yeah, really good player. And he's another one who should be praying to uh, to many people to get a really competent, uh, offensive-minded head coach. Although but I don't not, think he wants... Not Bruce Arians. Arians because Bruce no. Arians doesn't like tight ends. No, he's the last person he wants. It's the... Uh... Um, hi coach, uh, I'm David Njoko Oh sure, yeah, yeah, what can I do for you? I'd like a trade, please <laughs> I'd like to be as far away from you As humanly possible um, Who's your defence and special teams, Neil? 3,400, the New York Jets Why? They're playing Buffalo I will go down with this ship As Dido once said We we had this conversation via text today And I, my response to Neil was I know we've said we pick against Buffalo until we can't pick against Buffalo, i.e. they're not playing. And I was like, but really, I'm supposed to pick the New York Jets? I just can't, like, I can't do it. Like, I, I can't do it to myself, and I can't do it to the good people who listen to the show. So for 3,300, I'm going to give you the Kansas City Chiefs against the Arizona Cardinals. Don't think of it as what the Jets have to do. Think of it as what the Bills will do i.e. nothing. <laughs> Although, heartbreakingly, I lost my Scott Fishball matchup this week to someone who started, Nathan Peterman. Ooh. Obviously, he, he didn't do anything, but I had Todd Gurley, as I say, and uh, Gurley at one point was like, yep, yeah, this is fine, this is fine. It was the one week I had three quarterbacks on my roster, uh, Cam Newton, Andy Dalton and Josh Rosen. Usually you can start two quarterbacks, well, I've only got one. So I literally had to hope everyone else hit and the one person who let me down was Todd Gurley. And therefore, you've got the other fella with Nathan Peterman claiming the win. Now, piss off, son. <laughs> uh, let's review, Neil. Who's your quarterback? Andy Dalton. I've got Phil Rivers. Who's your running back one? Aaron Jones. I've got Kareem Hunt. Running back two? Tariq Cohen. Dion Lewis. Revenge game. Wide receiver one? It's up for grabs now. Michael Thomas. Man's Mike Evans. That makes me sad after today. <laughs> hey, wide receiver two. Tyler Boyd. 
I've got Josh Gordon, wide receiver three. Josh Gordon. I've got Amari Cooper, a tight end. David and Joku. I've got OJ Howard, flex. Corey Davis. I've got David and Joku in your defence and special teams. The New York Football Jets. Or as Neil likes to call it, versus the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> in my defence and special teams this week is the Chiefs. No expense will be spared until na- between now and the end of the season. No, absolutely. Make, that, make the defence 10 grand, I'll pay it. But 3,400, though, that's nothing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like that's, that's nothing. That shows you how bad the Jets are, I guess. There's another coach who should be fired immediately, by the way. Um, Neil, um, that's it for the, for the standard part of the show. I know you wanted to briefly touch on the loss of uh, Dr. Z this week uh, and give your thoughts on it. Yeah, um, obviously, for those who, who don't know, Paul Zimmerman, uh, Dr. Z, legendary football writer uh, for many, many years for Sports Illustrated, wrote one of the greatest uh, books about pro football, uh, The Thinking Man's Guide to Pro Football. It's just fabulously in-depth, wonderfully entertaining. It's one of those, I, I described him on Twitter as the Neville Cardus of American football writing. In terms of sports writing, I think he will stand up against the likes of Grantland Rice and people like that. And also, as we know from the past, we had many years ago, <clears throat> it is a long time ago now, but we had Neil Hornsby, uh, the creator of Pro Football Focus, and he said that one of the main people behind his vision for why he set up Pro Football Focus was Dr. Z, for the idea of, well, why is he a good player? Because you say he is. Well, no, let's see what he does. Mm-hmm. So when we live in a you know very analytics-heavy time now, especially in the NFL, an awful lot of that can be traced back to Paul Zimmerman, uh, Dr. Z. One thing I will say as well is, is like Dr. Z had a series of strokes in 2008 and was pretty much rendered uh, mute and immobile between then and his death. But Peter King, uh, by all accounts, was nothing short of an absolute hero for what he did for Dr. Z. He kept visiting. He was always, you know, always uh, going around telling him stories just to, just to talk to him, because obviously Dr. Z could ve- it was, had very, very great troubles communicating. So you can say what you like about Peter King, but he appreciated that not only was this man a great man, he was also his friend, and we should all be so lucky to have a friend like that. So anyone who's ever decided, you know, I actually would quite like to do some writing about this here game, you should say certainly find a copy of The Thinking Man's Guide to Pro Football. Go back and look over all... Um, if you can get all of it, his his back catalog SI works, he was say true a truly great uh, ambassador for the game. And even though he's not written for well over a decade, he will be missed. Thank you, Neil. In terms of reading and listening, where can people catch you this week? Well, obviously, my stuff is you know many many leagues below anything Doctor Z would ever put out. My wide receiver usage report is out on Rotoviz. My game-level similarity projection reports for quarterback and tight end will be out later this week. My number fire stats article, you can read that. That's over there on the Twitter machine. And at the moment, that's all I have. Who knows? It's Tuesday night. You know, the the, the, the night is young. Um, but at the moment, that's all I've got for you. Fantastic, Neil. Together, we are at waxing underscore lyrical. I am at mainz7. Drop us a line, a note. Do the usual fair. Um, that's it for this week. Uh, these top guys are out and hashtag beat Dallas, question mark. Repeatedly. Repeatedly.